This is a new category for the channel. It's not a series as such, it's called In the Workshop. And in this one, I'm looking at some Stuart Models 5A steam engine parts that I bought recently. Buying part finished models is generally quite a risk, but this isn't a part finished model, this one at some stage has worked, and worked quite hard by the look of it. First impressions on this engine were, yuck, it's horrible. But when I looked a little closer, I thought, no, it's not horrible, it's actually quite well made underneath the terrible paint job and the bodgers. All of the bearings, including the big end brasses, are completely shot. They've been bored out very clumsily, maybe to fit some oilite bearing bushes or something like that, but they're just going in the scrap bin. I bought this engine from the same man who I bought the Stuart Victoria steam plant from, but there the similarity ends sharply. The Stuart model's Victoria steam plant is beautiful whereas this is hideous. In this clip I'm removing the top part of the engine and what's left of the bearings. Like the big end brasses, the bearings have also been bored out to a stupid size, so they're gone in the scrap bin as well. I'm taking all parts of this engine right back to the individual components. That's the only way I can do it, I need to see what I've actually bought here. In this clip I'm removing the studs that hold the bearing top caps in place. I'm using pliers on the studs because I'm going to be replacing all these, so it's not important if they get scratched by the pliers. And to my surprise, what I'm seeing here is better than I first thought. The sole plate is well made. The next thing to do is to tap out the pin from the crosshead, which again, to my surprise, is a tight fit. Underneath the terrible external appearance of these parts, there's some really top class engineering. This pin wasn't rusted in, it was just a nice tight fit, which of course it should be. Why did I buy these parts? Had I taken leave of my senses? Did I not think I had enough work to do? Well no, I bought the parts because I thought they looked okay. It was a bit of a gamble, and to be honest I'm not really much of a gambler. And of course in this state the engine was not very expensive. It was a little bit too expensive really, I did try to talk the seller down but he was having none of it. It ended up costing me £275. And at this stage, an excerpt from Jack and the Beanstalk springs to mind, where Jack's mother says, What, you've sold the cow for five magic beans? Are you completely stupid? Well, no, not entirely, because the castings for this engine, that is the rough, unmachined castings, are £775.50 plus VAT. I wondered what I was going to find inside the steam chest. What was the state of the port face going to be like? And the first thing I found was a slide valve and four lock nuts. Which is pretty good, I didn't expect there to be anything in there. Once I remove the steam chest, I can see the port face clearly, and it's in very good order. I really am getting more pleased with this by the minute. I'll remove the studs so I can get at the port face. When I cast my experienced eye on this engine, I could see the potential in the machine parts that were underneath the horrible paint but it was more down to look than good management really. I could have ended up with a very expensive doorstop. But no, this engine will resurrect very well. Time now to take off the top cylinder cover and have a look inside. Is there going to be a piston in there? Is the bore going to be okay? I'm currently trying to conceal my pent-up excitement. I think I really do need to get out more. Yes, yes, and yes, here comes the last bolt, and it's nearly off. And the last bolt's finally out, and, and, I daren't look. I'll take off the cladding and see what's under there first. This is only held on with four bolts. I'm really pleased to say that so far I haven't come across any sheared bolts. I'm going to take the steel cladding off. Underneath it is this stuff. Is it asbestos? No, it's not. It's a modern equivalent. And now it's time to remove the top cylinder cover, and yes, there's a piston in there. And it looks okay. Hmm, another pleasant surprise. Time now to remove all these nuts that hold the cylinder to the standard. I notice that there is a union fitted to the standard. This is to allow lubrication to the crosshead. These are genuine Stuart Models fittings, and as I turn the standard over, you can see there's one at the other side too. All the studs are fine, and the nuts are coming off the studs very easily, and the cylinder comes away from the standard quite easily. It's a very good fit, it's not tight and it's not slack. The crosshead appears to be quite tight in the standard, I may have to look at this. It's far better for the parts to be tight rather than slack, because you can take the metal away, but if the parts are too slack you can't put the metal back quite as easily. 
In this clip, I'm removing the fittings from the lubrication points. And now it's time to put all the parts in a polythene container and pour cellulose thinners over them, or lacquer thinner as it's known as in the USA. I could use commercial paint stripper, but I don't have any of that, and my cars in the garage been painted at the moment, so I don't have a car. I need to have a look at this crankshaft. This is not good. The counterbalance weights are missing, and it looks a bit beaten up. But I have a spare 5A crankshaft, and this is a brand new, machine from the solid, new old stock crankshaft for a 5A. And as well as being beautifully made, this crankshaft has a drilled in oilway. I think it's time to look in my random box of Stuart castings and see what, if any, Stuart 5A parts are in there. Well, that's a good start. A 5A water pump eccentric and another one. And this is the collection of parts I found for a 5A in the box. If I want to make it non reversing, I could use this eccentric, but I think I'm going to fit reversing gear, so I'll order those parts from Stuart Models. So to summarise, was it worth buying this engine? Uh, yes, it certainly was. I don't like to take on too many projects, and I have plenty to do at the moment, so I won't be doing this for a while, I'll just put the box on the shelf. In the meantime, I will order some parts from Stuart, then they're all in the same box when I start the build. But there are at least four jobs in front of this. And that's it for the moment, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.